I tested three 4K capture cards to find out which one is the best. The Elgato 4K 60S Plus, the Elgato 4K 60 Pro, and the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K, also known as the GC573. This comparison is going to cover what all three do on paper, performance, what they actually do in real world testing, and my verdict on which capture card I recommend. First, what they do on paper. For reference, my build is an X570 motherboard with a Ryzen 5 3600 CPU and an AMD RX 5700 GPU. These specs are going to be very important throughout this. All three of these cards capture at 4K 60 frames per second in HDR. All three of these cards can also pass through 4K HDR but record in SDR if needed. The Elgato 4K 60S Plus currently retails for $400. It is an external capture card. It connects by a USB 3.0 slot. Or it can record in standalone mode to an SD card rated U3 V30. It has a built-in HEVC encoder. So the idea is whether your graphics card is NVIDIA or AMD, it shouldn't matter since the video compression is being done by the card itself. This device is limited to pass through and capture of 60 frames per second, even at lower resolution. So it's not gonna be able to do 120, 144 Hertz or 240, only 60 frames per second pass through and capture. This device can pass through and capture 1080p and 720p, but it cannot pass through or capture 1440p. The Elgato 4K60 Pro currently retails for $250. It is an internal capture card that connects directly to a PCIe X4 slot. It can pass through 1440p at 144Hz and even 1080p at 240Hz, but it can only capture these resolutions at 60 frames per second. The Avermedia Live Gamer 4K GC573 was $250 when I bought it. It is also an external capture card, PCIe X4. It can pass through and record at 1440, 144, and 1080p, 240 frames per second. I have links to current pricing of all three of these devices in the description, but honestly, screw what these devices can do on paper. How did they actually perform in practice? Now, I've been testing these things a lot over the last couple of weeks. Here's the breakdown. The 4K 60S Plus is incredibly unreliable. Now this product was met with many negative reviews on Elgato's website and on Amazon about the pixelated footage, corrupted recordings, audio desyncing, and buggy software. I ran into all of those issues. And I'm glad I did. At the time, I was really ticked off, but it's all good in the end because I can hopefully save you guys a lot of time, a lot of frustration, and a lot of money. I recorded standalone with the SD card specs they recommended, U3 V30. I warned you. Finally. Some of the footage looked completely amazing, but some of the footage was completely corrupted and just unusable. There were clips that were five minutes long that were turned into 30 seconds of green blurry mess. I recorded to my PC using Elgato's 4K capture utility, which is not good, by the way. Super pixelated. Sometimes the game's audio would be out of sync with the game's video. Frames were dropped all over the place, and it wasn't just me. I've seen this replicated on YouTube and in other posts on like Reddit. It's a common complaint with this device. Elgato keeps saying they'll fix the problems with an update to the 4K capture utility, but there are still a lot of issues as of this recording. Speaking of video and audio being out of sync, the 4K 60S Plus is trying to do too much. It's sending 4K 60 frames per second through a USB 3.0 port. That's like sending 1080 60 through a USB 2.0 port. There is heavy delay. Elgato claims it's about 250 milliseconds. In my experience, it seems to be closer to about 500 milliseconds, which is about half a second. But it's not just visual, the delay between the time that you see something on the monitor you're gaming on and the preview window in either the 4K Capture Utility or OBS makes it so the audio from your microphone or any other audio source is going to be desynced. So you have to manually sync them up by adding delay to the audio. And it's a huge nightmare and a pain. That's the whole reason I got the AC60S in the first place over two years ago, which I reviewed very positively. So I would never have to deal with that again. And yet, here we are. 
Here's the saving grace with this card. When I used OBS directly, not Streamlink, just the 4K60S Plus as a source, then the recordings were actually intact. No pixelation, no corruption. It was actually good, so there's obviously a problem with the 4K capture utility. The two problems using OBS as of now are, well, first, you can't capture HDR. OBS currently does not support HDR, but if you can't use the 4K capture utility to get consistent footage from the software, then I can't recommend a 4K HDR capture card that has problems capturing 4K HDR. Uh, the other bright spot of this card is that it works with AMD and NVIDIA GPUs because there is a built-in encoder. As of right now, I cannot recommend this card. It has too many hardware limitations and the software does not help it out. So really the battle for the best 4K capture card is between the Elgato 4K60 Pro and the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K. The Elgato 4K60 Pro performed way better than the 4K60S Plus, which makes me wonder why they released the 4K60S Plus in the first place. This connects to a PCIe X4 slot, which resulted in far less delay, but it was definitely not instant. Two very important things for AMD users though. First, when you choose your encoder as the AMD graphics card, like I chose the RX 5700, it would not give me 60 frames per second. It would bring me back to 30. It said it was 59, but it brought me all the way back down to 30. But when I chose software encoding, then it worked very well. It sent my CPU from 80 to 95% usage, however, and this was a Ryzen 5 3600. So if you're using something weaker, then you're very likely going to have some problems. And the second thing, which is kind of a deal breaker for me, I could not record 4K 60 frames per second HDR with my AMD RX 5700 graphics card. It wouldn't even let me tick the box. In fact, I have a support ticket up with Elgato and maybe they'll get back to me with a solution, but I'm not holding my breath for a workaround. Both Elgato and Avermedia really want you to have an NVIDIA 10 series or a higher GPU. The support staff and the reps like on Reddit, they're pretty much pushing you to get uh, an NVIDIA GPU. Apparently it's for these graphics cards, NVNC, which is good for encoding H265. So if you have an NVIDIA GPU, which is probably the majority of the audience here, then the 4K60 Pro might be the card of choice for you. But stick with me because I'm about to go over the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K GC573. That name. Anyway, the Avermedia GC573 performed the best of all three of these cards. In fact, the reason I'm not physically holding it right now is because it's the one that I chose to leave in my PC. There was almost no delay from the time I saw the image on the monitor my PS4 Pro was playing on and the time I saw it on my computer monitor. In fact, for a lot of the tests, I was just recording, looking at my computer only. Flawless footage in the built-in software and in OBS. But the best part, the 4K 60 frames per second HDR worked with my AMD RX 5700 graphics card. And it was not heavily taxing on my CPU or GPU. That tells me it can be done. The footage looks great. I've uploaded a couple separate videos in the description so you can actually see what the HDR looks like. I put it as an unlisted video to the description. And the reason is because actually editing HDR footage with SDR content in it is, it's pretty rough, you know, if you know. This device can also do extra things like RGB lighting and capture of 1440p, 144 frames per second and 1080p, 240 frames per second. I wouldn't say those are selling points for me, and I'll just be upfront, my 4K monitor right here is 60 hertz, but those features might interest you. There's only one aspect that I did not like about the Avermedia GC573, and this affects NVIDIA and AMG GPUs, so this is very important. It says it connects by a PCIe X4 Gen 2 slot. This is not completely true. Like I said, I have an X570 motherboard, so it has a PCIe X16 up top, and then two slots under that, there's a PCIe X4. But when I connected my graphics card to the X16 slot and the capture card in the X4 slot, I could not get 60 frames per second using RGB24 color space, and more importantly, P010, which is used for HDR. I was locked to about 55 frames per second. Interestingly, it still lets you tick the HDR box without P010, but I don't even want to go into that. Long story short, the capture card was not getting enough bandwidth from that PCIe X4 slot. So I swapped them. This let me get 4K HDR with P010. Now I read someone else who had the exact same problem as me in a review 
and they said that this was false advertising. I agree. I think it's pretty shady. Everything else is godlike, but that is the one thing that I dislike. And just because I know some people will wonder, I did test this on an RX 570 card and it did not let me record HDR at all. It didn't even let me select it. It's at the RX 570 does not support this. And it maxed out the GPU the whole time. So yeah, anything around like the RX 570 range, not the way to go. I'm thinking you're gonna need a 5700, 5700 XT or something stronger than that. Verdict, I already gave my verdict more or less, but the 4K 60S Plus is unreliable. Skip it. The 4K 60 Pro is a very good card. And if you have an NVIDIA GPU, then you'll probably like this one. In fact, I'll be testing this card with an NVIDIA GPU when I do my standalone review of this device. And the card I recommend is the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K GC573. It's the best card, it has the least latency, and it did 60 frames per second, 4K HDR with my RX 5700. I have Amazon links to all three cards in the description. If this video was valuable for you, please give it a like, and I'll have individual focused reviews of each of these cards up shortly. And I'll see you in the next review.